Tsubazeriai and hikiwaza is an often overlooked aspect of kendo, but it's really, really important. My name's Andy Fisher, and today on The Kendo Show, we're going to be looking at all different aspects of how to do correct tsubazeriai, as well as some introduction to hikiwaza. Hi and welcome to the Kendo Show. Today we're going to be talking about Tsubazeriai and Hikiwaza. We're here in Shubukan at the Fukuoka University of Education. Absolutely beautiful dojo. I'm so happy that we're going to be bringing in this episode from this lovely location today. And I'm here with my friend Max. He's been on the British team with me several times. We've competed in lots of different events together around the world. And I'm very happy that he's here with me to uh, bring this episode of the Kendo Show to you. Okay, so we're going to look at Tsubazeriai, how to do correct Tsubazeriai, as well as how to execute techniques or Hikiwaza, techniques going backwards um, from Tsubazeriai. So let's get straight into it so we can uh, have a look at those things. So from the Tsubazeriai position, how can we make attacks? First, let's look at the attacks that are actually available to us and how we can first start to practice them. First, if we were to attack the men from this posture, again, making sure that we're in the correct position, our, for the sake of practice, our motodachi is going to slightly open so that we have the opportunity. And we can simply make a large men's strike. Okay? And again, as with the forward strike, we make a stamp on the floor and then proceed to go backwards. We use the momentum from the stamp to push us backwards, okay? It's not like this, okay? It's a stamp that pushes us backwards this way, okay? Like this, okay? So from here, man, like this, okay? Just from here, we're gonna swing in a big arc, first of all, just as we're starting to learn, and man, like this for hikimen, okay? Man. Okay. Same for Kote. He's going to give us an opening here and we're going to bring it this way. And what's important is that we make a straight attack. Okay. If Max, you turn to the camera and show them how you're receiving, you can see that his Kote is still on the middle of his body. So I've still got the chance to make the straight attack. Okay. This way, I don't have to make a diagonal swing like this. This is the incorrect way to hit hikikote, diagonally. If I do that, I'll just hit him on the arm here or on the elbow and it will hurt him a lot. So instead, he's gonna do this and I make a straight strike to the kote, okay? My hands are in the middle, the left hand is in the center and I'm making an accurate strike to the kote. And again, stamp and then go backwards, kote. Unlike with men, after we hit men, we go back slightly in Jordan. But with Kote, we keep the Shinai at this height. Kote! So that we can keep it in Chudan. Okay, so one more time. Kote! Like this, okay? Finally, for Dole, he's gonna show us an opening by raising his arms like this, and we simply attack the Dole. Okay, again, not a sideways though like this. Yeah, I'm keeping my hands in the middle. My left hand is in the middle. And I'm looking to cut to about the middle of his body, okay, to get enough power for my hikido. Again, I'm gonna stamp as we go, and then go backwards, okay, do. And my shinai is gonna stay at this level for zanshin. Okay, do, and to chudan, okay? So first of all, men, Men! Then kote. Kote! And then do. Do! Okay? And then we have three ways of striking hikiwaza. Okay, so let's have a look at some more practical ways of executing hikiwaza. Okay? 
from Tsuba ZDI, let's say we want to try and hit his min. Okay, one way we can do that is we're going to give him a slight push this way. And if he is responding to that, if his Tsuba ZDI is somewhat weak or uh, soft, then this may be a good way to give us a chance for Hikimen. Okay? However, now, if we think about this as a realistic situation, if I go to the effort of creating this opportunity and then go like this, he's going to know it's coming. So I can't make the very large swing of the Shinai. So what we must do is from here, we push here, and then literally from this position, I'm going to bring the Shinai down sharply to the level of his chin to make the men strike, okay? To this level, okay? So I make a solid strike without making an upswing and obviously stamping and going backwards at the same time, okay? Men! Like this, okay? One more time. Men! Okay? We push slightly here and then go back for Zanshin. Okay? For Kote, what we're going to do is perhaps he's quite strong in Tsubazariya. He's got a lot of power. If I give a push this way towards his Kote, not sideways, but towards his Kote, he's likely to push back this way. And as you can see, this gives me a chance to hit his Kote. Okay? So from here, we're going to push towards here, and we're going to move back, and we've got that kote open here. And again, we're making the straight strike, not the diagonal strike. Okay? Straight strike. Okay? Kote! Like this. Again, this time, we're making a smaller swing with the shinai. From here, just from this point, straight down onto the kote. Okay? We don't need to make a swing up like this. Okay? Kote! In this way. Okay? Lastly, for Do, if he's quite a reactive person and he easily gets scared in Super ZDI, especially we may have already tried the first technique where we pushed and hit his men, he may be worried about being hit and his hands are quite easy to raise. So, we're going to try this time to push slightly downwards on his hands. And if we do that, he might be scared, we'll hit his men, his hands are gonna come up. And there we have our chance for door. Okay? And again, we don't need to make a big swing for door. We push this way, and as soon as the hands come up, we literally just use our wrists to make a sharp strike to the door. Okay? Obviously, with a stamp. Okay? Door! Like this. Okay? One more time. Go! In this way. Okay? So what we're thinking about is how to make him move in the way we want him to move so we can hit the area that we want. Okay? Remembering not to make these huge swings this time and have a sharp stamp that will send us flying backwards very quickly. Okay, so lastly, I'd like to quickly look at some slightly more advanced methods of attaining hikiwaza, okay? If your opponent is quite experienced, the methods that we just looked at of pushing this way and, and that way, he may already know. So if I give him a push this way, he may already think that I'm coming for his kote, so maybe he won't let me hit it, okay? So instead, we have to think of other ways where we can create an opportunity to make a strike. So. Let's think about a more advanced way to take men. One way is against an opponent who likes to hook the shinai on the opposite side. Now, if you do this for an extended period, it can actually be considered hansoku, but it's not often given. So many competitors who do not like uh, tsuba zeriai and are not very confident in hikiwaza try to escape from tsuba zeriai by hooking this way in the hope that 
if the shinai is on that side, their opponent cannot execute any waza because it's very difficult from here to hit men or kote or the door, okay? But it's actually very easy to counter, okay? All we're going to do from this side is I'm going to use my left fist to give his shinai here a little bit of a punch, okay? And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to bring it this way and do it there, okay? Okay, like this, okay? And then from that point, from that point, I can hit men very easily, okay? This is a very easy point to get hikiwaza, especially if he's applying a little bit of pressure on this side. Then it's very easy to strike hikiwaza this way, okay? So very easily, he's on this side. We're just gonna bring it this way. You can either hit him on his fist here, or you can hit his shinai. It depends how far away you are. You can hit his shinai here and hit your men there, okay? So he's trying to get away. Man! Like this, okay? It can also help if we make a slight diagonal step, okay? It's okay to work uh, laterally as well, okay? Kote is uh, quite difficult to find an opportunity for, actually. However, many people will still be scared of receiving a hit on the men. So even the smallest movement may provoke this reaction, okay? So to hit kote, I like sometimes to make a small movement this way. And this will make him feel like maybe I'm about to attack his men. And this gives me the chance to hit kote, okay? Like this, okay? You have to be a little bit more creative with uh, your distance, okay? It's very difficult to get enough to make this kind of kote, okay? So instead, you may have to be able to hit from here, okay? But my hands are still in the middle. My left hand is still in the middle, and I'm still controlling the strike, okay? You must not take your hands off the center like this and make a diagonal cut, okay? So from here, Kote, like this. Okay, one more time from here. Kote, like this. Okay? Lastly, for Do, Tsubazeriai is not, and this particularly goes for Shiai, it's not a mutually friendly experience. We're still fighting. Okay, it's not a chance for us to rest. Okay? So it's still okay especially when we're both in Bogu, <laughs> uh, for us to have a little bit of pushing and some uh, rough, rough and tumble go on, okay? It's not very good to pray, press on the neck like this. If you do this, you can receive the hand soccer, okay? It's also not good to hook like this, okay? You mustn't do that. However, a short and sharp strike like this it's quite annoying, okay? And if he thinks that I'm going to attack him, he will quickly raise his hands if I do this, okay? So this gives me a good chance to hit Hikido, okay? Like this, okay? I can even put my weight into it a little bit, like this. I'm sure it's very unpleasant, okay, to have somebody hit you like this, okay? But if you do this, they're very likely to raise their hands and you can make this hikido strike. Another tip for hikido <clears throat> is after making the strike, I recommend that you go this way, diagonally this way, okay? Not this way, it's very easy to go this way. It's very easy to go this way or it's very easy to go straight, yeah? But from the point of view of your opponent, if I go this way, it's very easy for him to follow me. But if I go this way, if I hit this way, it's much harder for him to turn and follow me. Okay, so it gives me that split second advantage where I've got a breathing space. Okay, it's a little bit harder, but it's much harder for him to come after me. Okay, so from a tactical point of view, it can be better to go diagonally this way. Okay, 
Last thing on Tsuba ZDI. As I said, pushing on the neck here will get you a Hansoku. Hooking the head here will get you a Hansoku. Pushing down on the Tsuba with my fist will also get you a Hansoku, okay? This is called unfair Tsuba ZDI. Obviously, in the grand scheme of things, as you're fighting, this sort of thing could happen. This sort of thing could happen. You're not going to get a Hansoku for a split second of this, okay? You will get a uh, Hansoku for this, okay? Where I'm using my hands on his shinai, touching his shinai, where it would be cut if it was a real blade, to prevent him to be in a position to do any waza, okay? This is called unfair tsuba zeriai, okay? So an extended period like this, like this, will result in hansoku also. Okay, so please do be careful with that. Lastly, you must make sure that whilst in Tsuba Zeriya, you are fighting. Looking for a chance to hit him, okay? Or you must break away. Simply resting here. Okay, I already scored a point, so I'll just wait till the end of the match. Okay, this is going to get me a Hansoku as well for time wasting. Okay, this is also part of the Shiai. Yeah? In fact, some, you know, Shi'ai can be, you know, up to 50% up to of your Shi'ai or more could be spent in Tsuba Zeriai. So if you don't learn to do Hikiwaza, you're wasting half of your Shi'ai, okay? But if you just wait here and just try and take the defensive stance, you're also likely to receive Hansok, okay? So they're the basic elements and more advanced elements of Tsuba Zeriai and Hikiwaza. <laughs> Sometimes we can forget to practice hikiwaza or only spend a very short time doing it. I think it's important to sometimes take time and learn to do hikiwaza well and it can be a very useful part of your kendo. So there we have Tsuba Zeriai and hikiwaza. I do hope that you enjoyed the video and that you found it useful. Of course, it's only based on my own experience, so if your teacher or sensei tells you to do it in a different way, please follow their advice. The kendo show is brought to you thanks to the support of our sponsors, Kendo Star. Kendo Star is a brand new kendo equipment website that ships amazing quality kendo gear around the world and then all shipping is free of charge. Next time you need something, get over to kendostar.com and not only will you get some amazing products, but you'll also be helping out the kendo show. Also, we have a Patreon fund where you can help us bring better quality episodes to you more frequently. It's over on patreon.com slash the kendo show. Thank you so much for watching today and we're really looking forward to seeing you in the next episode.